Hola, welcome back to my channel. Today we are here to do another orange chair chat and I'm super excited for today as this is one of my best friends in the entire world. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit with Hannah about just choices in motherhood and staying true to who you are as a mother without feeling the pressure to do things a certain way, to follow society norms or to just be bogged down by social media comparison. I'm like learning so much from her about motherhood and so that's what we're gonna talk about. I hope you guys stick around and yeah, let's get started. Introduce yourself to okay. the subscribers at Exo Jalisa. Cool. Um, okay, hi, my name is Hannah Kelsey Town. Um, I, like Jalisa said, I am a mom of one. <laughs> I have an eight month old baby boy named Kalai. Um, I'm a wife um, to a school teacher, actually. Um, and I work in community development here in Albuquerque and kind of focus on um, developing families and the community through the lens of working with children. That was a very humble introduction. What Hannah does with a, the program, which is called Juntos, um, is really powerful and really impactful to the city. And I'd actually like you to share a little bit more about Juntos and okay. what you guys do there. Because this was Hannah before she was a mom and a wife. And because we'll spend most of our time talking about your motherhood, I want to highlight that part of you a little <laughs> bit more. So go ahead and share with them what exactly is Juntos and okay. what you do. Um, yeah, so Juntos is a children's ministry. It is faith-based, um, and our focus is on communities that have been affected by social um, injustice that are kind of marked by poverty, um, abuse, um, failing school systems, kind of the whole nine yards of that. And how we do that is we create programming for kids, and we look through a holistic lens. So we kind of... Um, try and think of, okay, what is a kid experiencing in their daily lives? Well, they go to school, they have a family, um, they are in extracurricular activity, and so we try to meet them in all those different aspects. So um, I run a tutoring program um, for the kids here. We also um, do some parenting classes. We um, have a rally night where we have all the kids come um, and we do acting and skits and present the gospel and talk about Jesus and how um, he loves them and remind them of their identity. And it's just, there's so many different aspects of Juntos, but we love our work and we love seeing um, families and communities transformed through what we do. So, um, as this month is all about motherhood, and like I said, I wanna share with you guys some of the women in my day-to-day -day life who have impacted my motherhood journey or who I just admire as a mom. And so when I first met Hannah, like I said, she was single while well, she was just started dating Gabe and um, wasn't sure what, that, what was gonna come of that. And then they got engaged, got married, and there was this whole um, plan for them to not have a baby for five years. Yeah, a long time. At least. Yeah. <laughs> And so um, Hannah, despite her preventative measures, <laughs> got pregnant with Kalai before they even were married a year. And um, tell us a little bit about walking, walking through the emotions of that. Maybe just briefly tell us like why you wanted to wait so long, what that felt like um, when you got pregnant with Kalai. Yeah. Well, I come from a big family um, and all my sisters have kids. And so I had been around kids and um, not raised them, but helped raise kids since for as long as I can remember. Here's the youngest of five girls. Yes, so. yes, <laughs> I, I forgot to mention that. And so, yes, yeah, so I come from a big kid, a family with lots of kids. And so I guess I, I thought kids were restrictive. Mm. And I just was like, I have all these dreams. I'm, I want to do all these things. I mean, you know me. I'm yeah. kind of a um, ambitious type of person. She a busy body. <laughs> I am. I am. I'm, the Lord has delivered me, y'all. But we ain't quite got deliverance yet. But I, so, um, so I just move at a really fast pace, and mm -hmm. I enjoy that. Um, and so I just was like, I don't want kids right now because that's going to slow me down. Yeah. You know, from what I'm trying to do, I'm getting my master's, I'm blah, 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 like all these different things that I had planned. And, um, so when we found out that we were having Kalai, which 
like she said, was a shock because I was, I mean, maybe this is TMI, but I was on the IUD. Yeah. And so that, <laughs> I know, imagine that being the 1%, right? Yeah, yeah. that's me. Yeah. No, the point 0.1%. Yeah. So I honestly felt um, kind of betrayed. I know that sounds like no, so yeah, dumb. I get it. But I was like, no, God, like we had a plan. Mm -hmm. More like Hannah had a plan. This yeah, because I'm not sure gay <laughs> care to it five years. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm mad at God. I'm mad at Gabe. I don't even know why I'm mad at Gabe, but I was. But, um, yeah, because it takes two to take <laughs> I take no responsibility. <laughs> but so I think I just felt like, um, yeah, a little betrayed because I felt like um, my ambitions and my goals were things that God had put on my heart. Yeah. So I felt like, well, God, you asked me to do this stuff. So why are you giving me a baby right now? You know? <laughs> yeah. um, so I think I, I felt that. And I, I went through a stage of mourning. And I know that may sound bad, but I felt like I had to mourn um, my ambition yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Because I recognized and realized that although kids may not stop everything things have to shift yeah. and so so yes yeah, so it was actually really i mean you know yeah. i was like jaleesa what do i do <laughs> you want to adopt him no, yeah I'm no <laughs> like it was it was definitely interesting uh, being on the other side like of course i was super excited when hannah told me she was having a baby we said super excited. she's like one of my closest friends but uh, why I wanted to highlight that is because Hannah was very upset when she first missed her period and I was kind of harassing her like, girl, are you pregnant? Girl, are you pregnant? And she was like, there's no way, there's no way. And she took that pregnancy test and I remember that day like it was yesterday, the phone call, the text, the sound of her voice, like I knew that was something that was genuinely affecting her. Um, and why I wanted to bring that up is because Hannah, there had to have been some shift. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, and not when she laid eyes on him, at some point in your pregnancy, mm -hmm. there, you grew this really strong love and desire for motherhood. Like motherhood is genuinely like a piece of who you are. Yeah. And I started to notice that in you when you were pregnant with Kalai. Um, and so one thing I wanted to highlight with Hannah is motherhood for her is very unique to her. And I think a lot of the times we like to say like, this is my motherhood journey. But unfortunately we are so easily swayed in our journeys by what other people are doing or comparison. or And so we tend to move in the direction of the crowd as mothers, especially as millennial moms with all of the access we have. So one thing that I have admired so much about Hannah is she started to do her research, spend her time praying, and decide what motherhood was going to look like for her. Um, and she has stuck to it. Like, she has stuck to it. And that is really admirable to me because I'm guilty of being so easily swayed. Mm -hmm. And that was my, the struggle with my first son. My introduction to motherhood was very mm -hmm. um, comparison driven, very mm -hmm. anxiety driven. And so with you, um, talk a little bit about like, at what point in your pregnancy you really just fell in love with this idea of being a mother and what that was gonna mean for you. Yeah, so it's funny because um, I didn't, it's funny that you say that like, oh, I just love this baby because it sounds bad in, in a way, but I didn't feel that. Yeah. Like, I think um, there was a shift more in my perspective of what motherhood is came first before yeah. like, oh, I love this exactly. baby came. And so um, I think I, I can't pinpoint a time, yeah. but I think there was at some point where I was like, this little guy gets to be a part of what God is doing in my life and what he's asked me to do. And then I get to help champion him mm -hmm. in whatever God calls him to be. Yeah. And that is exciting yeah. because that's more my ambitious self. Like, I'm like, that is so much more than I could ever do, yeah. like by myself. But yeah. now, like, here's this person who God will have a call on his life. Mm -hmm. And me as his mom, I have a unique role in how I get to like shape that and yeah. how I get to, um, cheer him on yeah. in that and yeah. um and so that became kind of exciting for mm -hmm. me to think about how this little guy is going to um bring 
um, what he's going to bring to our family. Yeah. Like we are actually not complete because yeah. he is going to bring something that we desperately need mm. to our family, to the community and to, um, yeah, just all the people in our lives. Yeah. So that was like a more exciting idea for me in the beginning. They're just like, oh, I yeah. love him. Yeah. yeah, which I do, y'all. I'm obsessed with this little Yeah, boy. yeah. But. And rightfully so, he's so precious. And um, I love that. And I think that that's a good segue into my next question because uh, one thing that I like that you said was that he gets to be a part of what God is doing in your life, you and Gabe's life, and then you guys get to champion him. And it's not about like, oh, he's just gonna be so cute and I have somebody extra to love, And but you're seeing collide through the lens of his future, through the lens of, this is actually a man that I'm bringing into the world mm -hmm. that will add some sort of value to the world. Yeah. And so I think that that is why you are so intentional as a mom. So my next question to you is, what were some of the things that you decided that you were going to do for Kalai and how did you come to that conclusion without necessarily the influence of social media or mommy blogs or so you know with cloth diapering with not putting him on social media all of those things what helps you come to those conclusions yeah well it's hard yeah like it's it's hard not to to look at all the trends because um I see all the trends and I see all the things on social media just like everybody else yeah. um, and it's hard not to be like oh my baby needs to be all these things but then I thought about it for me personally so one decision that I made that you kind of mentioned is I don't put him on social media um, and if I'm honest it is for him but it's also for me yeah. It's, it, I don't know, it's hard for me to describe this, but I know my own heart. Yeah. And I know that there's this desire to be like, look at my cute baby. Like, look at, look at this and then feel the pressure for him to be perfect and to present him as this like, oh, look at this. And not saying that that's bad, but I cannot hinge and hang my hat on people liking my child mm -hmm. or thinking my child is cute or funny or like I don't want that pressure on me but I don't want that pressure on him mm -hmm. and so I think that's part that is partly the reason I decided not because it's too easy to get caught up in the game yeah. of likes yeah. and praise yeah. and wanting praise and what a great way to get praise from then a cute little biracial little boy <laughs> like you know what yeah. I mean like and and I so I know my own heart yeah. in that but then secondly um I made the decision because my husband is very private I would say I'm a fairly private person but my husband is very private and um he does not like to share um his whole life and he's not it's not because he's secretive it's just that he likes some things to just be for him yeah. and right now we're like we want Kalai to just be for the people that are closest in our lives like yeah. our families our friends people who know us yeah. um and so because of that we do, we chose not to put him on social media yeah. and maybe one day we'll change our mind yeah but for now yeah that's that was kind of what yeah. we decided i so. love that i love that and there's many things that hannah um is doing that I remember when she was pregnant, she's like, you know, I'm gonna cloth diaper because it's ethical. It's better for the environment. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so extra. Like cloth diapering sounds disgusting. <laughs> and like, it's not glamorous, yeah. it's not glamorous. <laughs> but I wanna be committed to the environment. So yeah. if that's a way that I can be committed to the environment and save some money because y'all, cloth diapering is way cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not going to lie, I'll save some coins. But breastfeeding, you found value in it. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what diet issues you've had since mm -hmm. breastfeeding, your own personal issues that you have, like she's not wavered from that because mm -hmm. things got easier because people will be like, it's okay to just do formula. Yeah. Um, and Which, so, But yeah, especially I got that a lot from the black community. Oh, just supplement. Oh, yeah. just supplement. Mm -hmm. Or everyone supplements a little bit. Yeah. But I like did not want to do that. Yeah. Like I was like, no, this is the what we decided. This is what I decided for my baby. And I know that it's not 
super common, especially in my mom's generation, to solely breastfeed. Um, but that was what I wanted to do, what I was committed to do for my son. And so, yeah. Those are just a few of the things that I have admired about Hannah's motherhood journey is her just staying true to what she feels is best for her and her son and her husband and their family. Um, because like I said, when I had Noah, my first, it was very easy for me to just listen to the mommy blog or all the pressure, um, the debates of shots versus no shots, schedule versus no schedule. Fee. It was so yeah, much. So it caused me a lot of anxiety and I've like watched her walk through this season with challenges, yes, but also with so much grace because she has found purpose in her decisions and I love that so much. And um, one thing I really want you to talk about before we end is you guys heard a little bit about what Hannah does for work and I have admired seeing you not stop working for the community and what you feel God has called you to do. Hannah has incorporated clients to everything that she does. I know in some situations we can't do that. We have to get the babysitter. We have to do the daycare. Um, but you have a job that enables that. But you still are choosing to incorporate him and make him a part of it all. Because I've offered to watch Kalai for her so she can work. And there's many people or there's care.com. There's many ways where you could, you know, have Kalai not be a part of that piece of your life. And so what I want you to share is just why you find value in incorporating him in your work. Um, because I think that is a huge part of your motherhood journey is you have not lost who you are, but you don't feel like who you are has to be separate from your son. And I really admire that. So why do you incorporate Kalai in your work and what does that look like? And what is your hope for doing that? Because one thing that I will say is it could be easy for people to be like, Hannah, sometimes your work makes for you to be in environments that maybe is the best for your baby. Or Hannah, like, aren't you afraid that Kalai might be introduced to too much too early? Or there, there's a lot of things that people could say about your choice to incorporate him in the kind of work that you do. Yeah. So why do you, what is your purpose in that? Yeah. And it's funny because as you're talking, I'm thinking, yeah, I have those same questions too. Yeah. Like I, I think about that too, like, you know, protecting him and things like that. But I think the reality is, is I mean, as I mentioned in the beginning, like Kalai is a part of our family. Yeah. He's a part of our lives. Like he's not this separate thing that stays at home or that, you know, is over here. And then mommy does this. Now there are times for that, but I really wanted um, that this type of, of ministry this type of work to be a part of who he is yeah. like Kalai the name Kalai means friend mm -hmm. and it's funny because um, one day we were thinking about what what that can mean and I just really pray that my son is a friend to many that he is not put off by someone's struggles that he's not put off because someone doesn't have what he has or looks like he looks or talks like he talks but I want him to be able to be a bridge builder where he will go across the the divide of differences yeah. and still engage them and I think if he doesn't see us doing that then then he's not going to um and so that is one big reason why i want to incorporate him into what i do this is like my he's my little sidekick you yeah. know um he's a bonus actually as well yeah. when, you know when i'm doing a home visit with the family um or when we're at um our office and you know we're working through finances or something with a family um it's important for him to be there for them and for me and for him um it's funny how they're like oh you will let me hold your baby mm -hmm. i've had people ask me well you know i'm homeless you're gonna let me hold your baby mm -hmm. and that hurts me that makes me sad that someone will think that because of something their situation yeah their understand. situation or what they look like or something that that they're untouchable yeah. and I want Kalai to be able to love the untouchables mm -hmm. yeah and so it's really important for me to bring him along um, because I do want him to be a part of all that we do um, as much as we can yeah I don't know if that answers your question no but. yeah I love that I love that and um, I think that just follows right along with the intentionality that I introduced Hannah to you guys as a mother who is walking through this journey with so much intention. And so I love that because you see, even though Kalai is just a baby and we could say like, well, he doesn't understand, he doesn't know, this will just yeah. be normal to him. This will just be people, no matter what they look like, no matter what poverty line they fall under, like 
they will just be normal to him. And so I love that. Overall, what I wanted to have you on my channel uh, for was just to really talk about intentional motherhood. And I hope that everything that we have talked about points back to the fact that um, intentional motherhood is something that is challenging, yeah. but something that is beautiful and worth it. And let me just say this, like, don't hear me saying that something is wrong with going with the trends or that um, following the blogs and following the books. Like, I'm a blogger. Like, I am one of these people that are offering the advice and saying the things. But being so um, consumed in that world as a mother and seeing a very close friend of mine kind of be like, no, actually, that's not for me and thrive even still as a mother, um, it has just been a big learning experience for me. It's something that I want to share with you guys. Yeah. Uh, so the final thing I'm going to say is, what would you say to young moms, old moms, new moms, seasoned moms about um, just doing what is right for you and your family and walking that out in confidence? Yeah. Motherhood is about figuring out what works for you yeah. and what works for your family yeah. and thinking through like what is important to us what do we value yeah. and how do we live that out yeah. and if they're in sometimes the trend is something that I value you know yeah. and so it's like you want to do that like oh yeah there's this person on Instagram I love the way they parent their kids so I'm going to do some of those things yeah. but ultimately it's finding what works for you, embracing that, and even as the criticism comes, so because people maybe don't understand why you chose what you chose, still being confident that you are, you are responsible for um, these little people and how you love them and how you parent them just has to work for you. It has to work for your family and your values, so. And another thing is don't hear us saying like, oh, motherhood is exclusive to you. Like, don't ever get help. Don't ever ask for help. Like, do you, boo? Like, you don't need to listen to nobody because that's just not that's, wise. Yeah. And that's not what we're saying. But what would you say is a yeah. good balance with that? Okay. So one thing I think is just helpful is just know who you can, who's going to support you in the, the things that you have decided and who's not. And if there is an area where you feel like, okay, I, you know, you decided that you want to exclusively breastfeed, right? But people are going to give you a hard time and keep pushing formula on you. Maybe, maybe when it comes to talking about feeding your baby, that's not, you, that's not a conversation you engage with them on. Yeah. Um, because the reality is people love you, they love your kids, and they, they do really want what is best, yeah. but sometimes they don't support you in doing the hard thing. Yeah. Because intentionality is hard. Yeah. It would be easier for me personally to to grab some formula and give yeah. it to my baby. Yeah. Sometimes that would be so much easier, but I have decided mm -hmm. that that is not what I want to do. I want to try and exclusively breastfeed for yeah. a year. And so if I'm in a conversation with someone who I know is not going to really support that, who's going to, no, girl, just do it, just do it, just do it. Maybe I choose not to engage in a conversation about formula versus breastfeeding with them yeah. so I would just say know um, who is going to support you in some of the hard decisions yeah. that you've made and who is not and it's not because you don't love them or anything or like that. Or you don't that. respect them. Or you don't respect yeah. their opinion or want their advice none of that. That's definitely not what it, you're yeah. saying but you are saying is in these harder areas where I've, I've made a very hard but, uh, but strong decision and I have a conviction about whatever it is i'm actually only going to kind of talk about it to people who i know are not going to try and discourage me from it yeah so yeah that's a really good way to help stick to some of the things you decide because we all decide things and then go back on them yeah all the time yeah. you know but it is helpful to have people who are going to support you in those things yeah. around and like i love that like she said you know i've made up my mind and so this is what I'm gonna do because I do believe it's best for my baby. And so that doesn't mean, like, I'm never gonna ask this person for advice because they're not encouraging me to right. breastfeed. Right. Maybe there's another area where that person could really bless you in your motherhood journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not saying, like, only do you and never ask for advice, never yeah, read the blogs, or never foolish. have community and people that you trust that you can lean upon, that yeah. is wisdom. And I encourage you to do that. Especially from all the older generation. Yes. They have so much to offer. Yeah. Um, and things like that but if but to be an intentional mom sometimes yeah. does mean choosing, going against the grain yeah, go, yeah going against the rain and choosing to to politely say i hear you but that is not what i've decided yeah. for my family thank you thank you <laughs>
In this video, I know you heard a lot of my kids and a lot of my dog walking around. Please forgive me. <laughs> um, that is motherhood, but yeah. So thank you so much for being here with me. And like I said, I learned so much from Hannah. And my hope for doing this series is that you can just listen in and maybe just be encouraged by um, other women's journeys of motherhood. I hope that from this specific video, you take away, um, be true to your journey of motherhood uh, because God really chose you to mother your children and he enables us to make the right decisions for our family specific to us like all pressure off mm -hmm. like this is your unique journey and yeah. I love your unique motherhood journey and I'm super blessed to have been able to watch that unfold mm -hmm. and continue to watch that as you Gabe and Clyde grow into a family and grow yeah. um, grow your family one day um, so I love that. Uh, so you <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna link below the Juntos website. It's a nonprofit organization and they are fully funded by donations. Yeah. And so if it is on your heart to donate to Juntos, oh, Hannah, thank you so much for being course. here today. Uh, I've been blessed by your journey. I hope that you have all been blessed by her journey. If you are enjoying this series, please comment, like, subscribe to my subscribe. channel. And there will, I'm gonna have some more conversations with Hannah in the future. I really want to share some other aspects of her life and her perspective with you guys. And um, yeah, thank you for being here. Hope you enjoyed and I always appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs>